Hey everybody, you like the last Brinkley that we brought you? So here's a brand new one, the very first exclusive sneak peek at their new toy hauler, the Model G. Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd kicking in the door down here at Brinkley's headquarters. Had the opportunity to sneak in once again and get you the very first look of anybody out there of their new Model G toy hauler series. And just like the Model Z fifth wheel that you saw before, the idea behind this one is that a member of their founding team, a partner, executive, brand manager with the company, actually took this out, tested it, used it to see how it was going to perform on the road uh, to see what they could improve. Now, they already had a couple notes, but part of the reason they asked me to come down here is just like we did on the Model Z. They realized that all you folks out there are the single best source for development information possible, and they want all the input. Tell them what they're doing right, where they're nailing it, where they're failing it, where they could do it a little bit better. And I can't promise they're going to be able to incorporate everybody's ideas, but they're going to get quite a few in there from what I've seen. So uh, this is been run down to the Florida Keys and back like on a two-week hard stress test and what's awesome about this is like over the top just comes standard on this uh, Model G right here so it's a 100 uh, a 101 inch wide body it only has three awnings and all the windows in the world on the door side of the RV there's so many crazy little features that like once you've seen them you're gonna wonder why no RV manufacturer has been doing this before like it has one of the best, maybe the very best sound system I've ever heard on any RV. And you cannot see any of the outside speakers, but you could be blowing away some DJ on stage somewhere with this thing. Uh, when you shift into reverse, every light on the outside of the sucker lights up. Everybody in the, and their brother's gonna know what you're doing on the road. But the interior, one of the key things they did different on this is uh, the, the loft for the garage area, that loft bunk, they actually put it in the garage instead of in the living area. And what they've really truly done is created a luxury living fifth wheel that just happens to have a totally separate flex function room on the back. Now, obviously, you, you know, you could load side by sides, you could load family, you could load friends, uh, you, you could do anything you wanted with this thing and then some. There is so much. I cannot wait to cover with you on this. All the cool outside storage things they did different. A couple little personal notes I have, but once again, we are here today to get your feedback. Whether you're a toy hauler enthusiast or not, please watch through this. Let us know what you like. Let us know the one or two things that you would change given the opportunity. And if you appreciate, once again, how we break away from the office to get you this footage, make sure you like our video and subscribe if you're new with us and catch us on the next one. But for now, you're in for a treat. So pardon the extra startup information here, but I just got a call from a couple of guys at Brinkley. And basically, uh, before you even got to see this footage, they've already decided what they're going to do is make this model a triaxle because they just weren't able to get the proper cargo capacity they wanted. And they did not want to put something out there with all these cool, fun features, but you, you couldn't actually load anything into it. So it's going to have probably around a 4,500 pound uh, cargo carrying capacity. I've already adjusted the specs that you saw earlier on the screen. I just wanted to let you know that. So that will supersede anything that we're uh, going to see later in this video. And by the way, they're also going to make disc brakes an available option. Pretty cool. And I'm going to say this several times, but to really set the stage here, remember, this is prototype number one. And, uh, you know, certainly some things will change. Uh, I, I think there's some things you're definitely not going to want to change. Like when you see this kitchen, this is the best kitchen I think I've ever seen in a toy hauler. I cannot wait to show everything in here to you. Uh, there's definitely some things that uh, are going to be tweaked. Uh, what I would, like I said, really uh, like you to do is as we go, whether you leave me one big comment, whether you leave like, you know, 40 little comments, I don't care. Leave some feedback that we can send back to the manufacturer and, um, you know, we can uh, help them. Now, in the Model Z video, a lot of people said, oh, the flooring is, is junk. No, it's a carpetless floor flush flap that was just cold and it, it curls, it like bacons. You notice how this one's not doing that. Did you also notice how it's completely carpetless and has ventless flooring? And not only is it a carpetless floor flush living room slide, but also a carpetless floor flush kitchen slide, which is not coming up in this category. Now, most floor plans right up there is where you're going to see the um, like the, the loft area. It does have a loft, but it's not open air into the living room. And what I like about that, what a lot of manufacturers like to say in these big high dollar fifth wheel haulers is that they make a luxury fifth wheel 
that happens to have like a garage flex room on it. And I think by separating uh, the loft and everything from the living room, they have truly more than anyone else, uh, I feel, accomplished that. Now, I've got a couple notes personally, but I would like your feedback on this. I looked at this and this, uh, you know, television feature wall, like this RV, every square inch of it is eye candy. But then I came over here on the entertainment wall, which is a very big focus wall. And for me, it felt flat. And I think what I would like to see is like a little fireplace built out right there, just like, you know, like a little mantle below it. But, you know, what would your two cents on that be? Like, would you like to see a fireplace right there or not, you know? Now, you can see the garage back there. We will get back to that garage in just a minute. Uh, first of all, on the way over, I, <laughs> I like... I like this uh, vertigo-inducing uh, pendant light up here. And here's another crazy thing. Like, almost every light in this RV is dimmable. Like, all of our ceiling lights, garage lights, awning lights, you can control that all off the control center that we're going to see, which has some extremely cool features I can't wait to show you. That's one of those rain-sensing Max Air-type vent fans. You see the wall controller over it. Uh, for it over here. And a lot of people sometimes wonder, they see these little things on the wall, they go, what is that? Well, that's obviously a, uh, a listening tap for the FBI surveillance van that I get my Wi-Fi from. Also, it's called a thermistor. It's what tells the smart control panel what the temperature is. Basically, it's a uh, it's a temperature sensor is, is effectively what that sucker is. <laughs> now, uh, talking air conditioners real quick. Um, this has a uh, dual air standard. So your, your uh, living room, kitchen, and bedroom centralized airs are standard. It's prepped and ready for garage third air, which is an available option. So uh, kind of keep that in mind. This is going to be a product that is designed and intended to uh, hold up to rigors of like extended hot cold camp, uh, you know, usage. Look at all the windows over here. Over here on the door side, the window coverage is incredible. And it starts in the door. It goes up through the hallway but the door has its own window. Now, I'm actually inside their factory building and they killed the lights right now, so you can't see it extremely well. Let me get close. You see how it's got that bottom up extra tall shade. It's also got the screen assist bar down below so you can pull the door shut without you know ripping off that little slider panel right there. And for my uh, pet friendly folks, or if you got a little toddler and you don't want them banging up your screen, it's got the little extra screen defender on there for you. But look at these little side stands. They made the living room slide extra deep. If you notice, it's like they got that nice cool top. They're kind of uh, open on the bottom, but they have flip up power outlets, household and USB, including USB type C on both sides of the sofa, which I think is very, very neat. But the windows here are one of my favorite things on this. I call them square flow windows. Um, it's almost like if a frameless window a U.S. frameless window, and a Euro window had a baby. Because notice how there's no valences, there's no lambrequins, there's not that ugly stuff hanging out, but you do have your, uh, you, you do have shades built into these. So if you really want to flat blot out the sun, like the arrows of the Persian army, you certainly have that uh, capacity. Now I'm eyeballing it, but I think that slide out in here is like seven foot tall. It is extra, extra big. And one of the things that you can kind of see are these extra circles up in the ceiling. Those are uh, part of your speaker system. The sound system on this, you need to see and hear in person. I'm going to talk more about that outside and show you some of the hardware that makes that possible. But the sound system on this is incredible. So uh, one other note, if you're not uh, in love with that sofa color. There is going to be a gray. There's also going to be like a, a protected fabric, like a scotch guarded kind of fabric type sofa. So this is not the only color that they're going to be offering. They're going to have this kind of, I'm not good with colors, mustard. I don't know what you call that. Um, you know, this, this tan, they're going to ha also have a, a gray scale to it. Um, all four sections of this are recliners. Your two end seats have heat massage, extra USB plugs, and I was going to do a cool big reveal, but I accidentally left that side one open. So pretend I didn't. And voila, you're amazed as you find out that there's storage in there. And once again, all four sections of that big sofa are storage. But I told you, I couldn't wait to show you the kitchen. Look at this. Look at this. It's this incredible pantry. The best pantry I've ever seen in any fifth wheel toy hauler. It slides open to you and it's like two stage. And like anywhere that you see shelving in this. It's all adjustable. I'm sorry, I'm getting loud because I'm, I'm freaking jacked about this. All that shelving space, all that storage is adjustable. 
And look what happens. This thing converts by not, it doesn't have the sink in the, in the island eating up the prep space. But the island has this gigantic countertop extension that flips up counter level and is supported off the other counter chunk to create this massive, massive, uh, like, peninsula counter. Then built into the island is just pure storage um, with a, uh, a double trash bin. And then you have, like, extra drawers and this, this cool little, like, slide open uh, paper towel holder that you can take out. You can set out if you want it, if it's serving time or anything like that. This is the coolest kitchen I've ever seen in a fifth wheel toy hauler. And it's still not done. I'm sorry. I'm yelling. I'm, I'm apologies. I'm, I really am. This is awesome. Now that's all steel enforced, by the way. All your heat vents are coming in out of that. So that island is heavy duty reinforced. But like I said, you're still not done taking a look at all the storage. Because... Look at this. You see this little handle hanging down here? That is your spice rack. Let me let me let me show you again. Boom, baby. But oops. <laughs> they got a bottle of wine in the way. Oops, celebrated a bit early. You've also got a magnetic knife rack built right on that thing. Goes away, comes out when you need it, goes away. It's completely seamless, completely hidden. There's like eight First of a kind, that's the coolest thing I've ever seen in a fifth wheel toy hauler kitchens. All in one on this thing. I absolutely love it. Now, in case you're curious, you see the little uh, alien antenna sticking up over there. That is not Marvin the Martian. Um, that is a uh, the the basically the Wi-Fi router system. And it has this um, smart sim in it. Or basically, this company has a surprisingly affordable subscription service where what it will do is it will actively find whatever Verizon, T-Mobile, any t um, tower in the area, actively determine which one gives you the best signal and automatically adjust to it. It's very, very cool. So you're jumping all the carriers. Now, sorry, I keep shouting. I am excited. This is one of the major things. Like I talked about the fireplace, that refrigerator, I need your input. We need your input. And the reason I ask is... Um, they originally were planning on putting like a, uh, a Norcold, uh, 18 cubic foot four door refrigerator freezer, but Norcold's discontinuing that refrigerator. So they looked at this and said, okay, that's also a big giant fridge, but it is 110 electric only. It's a residential refrigerator. As we talk more about this, you'll find out this RV has a standard 3000 watt inverter and 200 amp hours of lithium batteries. It can absolutely run that fridge, not forever, but it's also got a bang and solar package on the roof. But those residential fridges are power hogs. So even an 800 watt solar package, I'm not sure will overcome that. The question I have, all this being said, is I'm personally a really big fan of those new big 12 volt DC compression fridges. Like uh, Alliance Paradigm uses those things. It's like a 20 or 21 cubic foot compression residential, uh, well, 12 volt fridge. Is the 110 fridge in here okay? Or should they explore that 12 volt fridge leave your feedback that's a very hot button item on my personal docket maybe maybe it actually isn't a big deal so i want to kind of crowdsource some info that we can give back to the factory well you're tapping that up we're gonna keep on sliding forward here even the steps they did something a little different so first of all this first bottom step you see how deep that is in a way it's just like general cargo storage but that is also where your um, you know, inverter remote switch is located. But look at what they did under this thing. They include this handy little like hard plastic tray. Almost looks like the lunch lady tray now that I look at it. But shoes, gross, wet shoes. You can, you can, first of all, you can slide them open to get to them without crawling on your hands and your knees. Secondly, if they're wet, who cares? They're in that handy tray right there. It's those kind of different ideas that I think are really, really cool. But there is something about to happen with this Smart Command series that I can't wait to tell you about. Thank you. I'm sorry for shouting. This is fun. I mean, I'm not personally generally a big fan of fifth wheel toy haulers. This is awesome. This is threatening to become my favorite. I got to really digest it. Anyway, the Smart Command system over here, it does the things you would expect it to do. It controls your heating, your cooling. You can open and close your slides and all that stuff, all your lighting, dimmers, all that stuff. You can control it from your phone, of course. There is another switch panel in the garage that mirrors these functions, which I think is very cool. And of course you can uh, you know, Bluetooth to it. 
One of the things that isn't put into place yet, but is happening, here's another industry first kind of insight for you from your Uncle Josh. They're going to be programming in where you can set modes or functions where basically, imagine this, you pull into your campsite, you get unhitched, you're not even level, you're just unhitched and you pull the truck away. You reach out of your pocket and go boop with one button. The fifth wheel levels itself. It deploys all its slides. It deploys all its awnings, turns on all the lights, gets the air conditioner and everything running exactly how you like it with one touch. Then when you're ready to leave, boop, one touch, closes everything all by itself. Would you be interested in something like that? Because that sounds cool. And once again, while you ponder that, and again, please keep the feedback coming. And if you appreciate how we're getting you all this extra information and footage today, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you have not done so already. Now, the upper deck of this is going to be very similar to the Model C, uh, Z, rather. But this Model G is basically everything the Z did and then some. It's a, well, it's a Z plus, basically. Um, and uh, let's start right down here. Notice over here on the left, though, you do have a true pocket door that does slide into the wall and it locks in place we have a porcelain foot flush stool and look at the room around this it's absolutely fantastic but check out the waste basket it has a, 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 a trash can dedicated into the bathroom how many times in how many of my videos am i griping about them not like rvs not having space for that now this is one of the litmus tests i'm putting when someone wants to call themselves a higher level fifth wheel they better have the bigger freaking fan. And that's the Fajita Friday Fume Fighter right there. No dollar store four inch freaking fart fan, man. Um, Steve Z, regular viewer, you're going to be happy with this one, I think. Now, remember that super, super cool uh, kitchen pantry? Look what they did in the bathroom. They did it all over again. Remember, all of that shelving is adjustable up down take it in you know out whatever i mean so like in the kitchen if you wanted to set one side up for like you know brooms or something you could do that it is awesome sauce what they are doing here now remember um this rv was tested and stressed for lack of a better way of saying it by uh one of the founders uh and and you know uh partners here at brinkley so they still got some stuff in the shower which i actually think looks kind of cool to give you an idea Look at that little, um, I call it the Ahsoka Tano lightsaber, that white light beam, like neon, instead of Morse code dot, dot, dot LEDs. That stuff runs a little more, but man, it looks super cool. And something you don't think about, in showers, when you shop for RVs, it's daylight. The skylight keeps this lit. Remember how all of the lights are off in this building? It's in a pitch black building, and you can see plain as day in here. You also do not have headroom issues up here. I think think the upper deck it's like six foot seven and a half inches or something crazy like that it's also a one piece uh fiberglass molded shower so it's like self-reinforced and uh if you remember from the model z that is not the mirror mirror on the wall if you notice that actually is its own little medicine cabinet which i think is cool and then uh once again taking you down below here opening everything up looking at every single square inch of storage nothing left unturned they have, I think, really, really nailed that bathroom so, so hard. But if you're noticing, this RV is beautiful. But function first was their goal. Now, there's a lot of fashion going on here, certainly. This RV would look very good going down the, uh, down the Victoria's Secret catwalk or whatever. But my point here is this is a very functional RV. And one of the areas where you see that, this is a fifth-wheel toy hauler whose bedrooms are notorious for getting smashed down. That's the king bed. There's a queen option, but even with the king bed, there's plenty of room to walk around it. And again, any little nook and cranny, they wasted absolutely nothing up here. You've got those same square flow windows over here in the bedroom. I love that extra uh, Cyclops window there above the bed. Uh, again, the headroom in here, just like that shower, it is big. Now, that is not uh, like a normal mattress. That's like a residential mattress that the uh, the user of this put in. And the struts on that are holding it just fine, which I thought was very, very cool. Um, working our way around here. 
this is tall enough, it will be stackable, washer, dryer, prepped, and you will get to see in just a minute here, that's actually something that you'll have in this RV as well. Now, as we, uh, you know, if, if I lay, if this is, if you lay down at night, this is kind of what you're going to see right here. One of my only other personal little points of critique is that TV is flat mounted. I would like it to be angle mounted down a little bit. They actually did that in the Z, and I don't see it done here in the G, just so that'd be a little easier to view. That is, by the way, all the TVs in this are smart TVs, which is also very nice. But this bedroom is not without its little Legend of Zelda secret surprises, starting right there with the top of the dresser, the whole thing, awesome storage. And I like how that dresser top slides open instead of flips open, so you don't gotta take stuff off it. But there you have it. I mean, how cool is it you actually get to see the stackable washer dryer in this one? I think that is very, very awesome myself. Now, up in the closet area, um, it is motion light activated, by the way, which I think is very cool. And you see, under the bed, they did a little thing where they added some dresser drawers so they're easy to get to. And there's like a storage trunk behind it. So most of the time, you don't even need to lift the bed. But if you flip your legs out of bed, did you notice that motion light kick on? So if you're getting up at night, there's motion lighting under the edge of the bed where it's never in direct view of anybody so that nobody's eyes get stabbed by it. Now, some of your like battery monitoring stuff is up here, uh, power control system in the bedroom. This is another thing. So you can have three air conditioners going on this, but what if somebody fires up that convection microwave? What that will do is it will say, okay, we have three air conditioners. I want you to keep all your fans running but one of you, turn your compressor off for just a minute while we, you know, for two minutes, cook your Campbell's soup. And then the compressor will turn itself back on and you'll never even know there was a break in service. That's, that's very, that's very cool. Now, we've, holy cow, we've seen a lot of stuff. We're not even done yet. We have got ourselves this big old awesome garage space back here. This model has an 11 foot garage. And while we're coming back here, I want to talk a quick construction point. So these floors in here this is 5 8 tongue and groove plywood with an aluminum joist structure below that so that is heavy duty this garage floor is 7 8 plywood <laughs> that, that, that's that's pretty pretty awesome and they're targeting about at least 3,000 pounds of cargo capacity on this they haven't quite done it all yet but look at the tie down system here it's almost like e-track but you have three runs of it plus a couple in the back where uh, there's like these rubber inserts in it right now, but you can kind of pop those out and you can kind of adjust this. Now, this is interesting because we're in the factory right now and you can kind of see some of the factory walls behind us, but it's kind of giving me that feel like, what if it's, you know, you come out here, it's the middle of the night, you got all your patio lights running because even the, uh, I'm gonna spin you around to the right real slow here, even the uh, rear power awning has its own little lighting back here. So you can sit back here with friends, having a drink, shoot, you know, shooting the breeze, chewing the fat. What, what, where, I don't know where those, why would you shoot breeze? Is that just two good old boys got together one day and decided to just burn some ammo or something? I don't know, anyway. Um, I wonder weird things. Uh, I don't, I, I, sometimes I wonder how my wife tolerates me. Now, again, this is prototype number one. By the way, nobody needs to like chime in and like help me out on that one. Um, anyway, prototype number one, what I'm getting at here. They didn't want these benches uh, blocking the overhead clearance. They did some measuring. They're going to get five extra inches of this. So these benches will actually be above the doorway by the time it's all said and done to give you maximum loading height. So you got like a side-by-side, uh, -side, this being an 11-foot garage, keep that in mind. But, uh, you know, all the Model Gs are going to have kind of that similar feature right here. And um, of course, being a hauler, we have ourselves the most flex function space you're ever going to see. Starting up top here, this can drop down into the, uh, the double bunk beds. And of course, you know, you can operate, like those benches can hang vertically or horizontally, depending on if you need maximum load width or height. Uh, you can also leave the top bed up and just drop the two sofas down. You notice it's got like that theater seat kind of uh, extra little thing on there as well. Um, there's bonus storage in the floor that has aircraft style locks. There's a, a free floating table 
that is the legs are adjustable so if you want to set that table in the dovetail of the hauler it will still lay flat you don't have to worry about your your soda up here in michiana the fictitious land between michigan and indiana we when we go camping a lot of us like to get fago because it's tasty and cheap and gives you diabetes but uh you get the idea it can do anything you want um now Oh, by the way, there is a ladder dedicated to just those bunks. But keep in mind, that's what's cool about this. This rig can sleep seven adults, not just kids. That's a major factor right there. So if it's going to mostly just be the two of you and you want to have some extended family over, more than just the grandkids can come with you. Now, that TV can flip up to get out of the way. I really like, I mean, when you drop it down, that is nice and easy viewing. You might notice, though, it's very much off center. Well, that's because they put the loft totally in the garage, which I love. I've, I've never personally really, really liked a, uh, a loft off into the, uh, the, the living space of an RV. And, well, now you don't have to worry about that. Um, I really like how, let me see if I can get the camera up there and really give you a look around. Nicely finished off, that is. Sorry, I can't exactly see what that's looking at. My apologies. That probably was not the best work I've ever done. Um, obviously, removable ladder there as well. Now, moving on back here into the bathroom. Notice, too, the step up on the floor. That way, if you spill any sort of liquids, it can't really, like, run into anything. Yet another porcelain foot flush stool. Well, once again, with plenty, plenty of space around it. And I like how this has a real good dedicated sink, a little bit of cabinetry there for some extra butt napkins, yet another one of those hidden sort of, um, you know, storage mirrors. And then what you're not really seeing is all the way up to the ceiling, you do have one of those really nice big XL vent fans to get some awesome, awesome airflow going. Now the sound system, they're using a four zone sound system that can like, everything can talk to everything. So if you want totally separate stuff, in the living room, garage, outside, bedroom, you can do all that. Or if you want to just jam one music through the whole thing, or only in some of the areas, inside or outside, you can do that. If you want to uh, actually listen to your TV through the whole thing, it will do that too. Most RVs, their TVs don't play through the sound system. And this is where I'm saying, once again, that is a second layer physical switch panel for that digital system that you're seeing right over there. And here's like the other really kind of crazy cool thing with this. We're still not done with the control panel. There is yet another layer of redundant systems where you have yet another way of um, like functioning stuff if you want. But I do believe it is high time to see her in road mode. And I really wasn't sure how road mode was gonna work out typically. When you have opposing slide fifth wheel toy haulers with some kind of island, you flat lose the kitchen. But look at this. You can at least get to the refrigerator. Now the freezer drawer won't open, but you can access the fridge. And the other thing is, there's actually a little outdoor mini fridge on this that you haven't even seen yet. That frankly, I've, I've never seen anything like it in a towable RV. I've seen it in motorized. Now, since the bedroom and the bathroom are off the same side as the hallway, Access up here is really not an issue. Um, I also noticed I was very easily able to open the bedroom door. So sometimes in some big fifth wheels, uh, the mattress will prevent the uh, bedroom door from opening. I didn't have that problem here. This, as far as I'm concerned, it passes the Cracker Barrel test. What do you think? All right, so back outside here, once again, uh, you are up in that dually country. The Ford freaking Ranger need not apply for this one right here. Um, although, as we all know, truly a Ford Ranger is engineered and designed with unlimited towing and payload capacity. Obviously, that's not true. But some of the things that I see on the internet leads me to believe people think that. Um, wow, we have a lot to cover out here. I'm tripping on stuff. Anyway, so this thing right here, the Gen Y Hitch, this has been available aftermarket for years. And basically what it is, um, if you're familiar with a torsion axle suspension system, that's essentially what this is. It's dual torsion bars on here. And what it's basically going to do is like make this RV essentially float behind you. Your vehicle is going to bounce around and any jumping that the vehicle or the RV experience will be basically expressed separately so that the one is not, you know, rattle trapping the other one around. 
that standard, that upgraded pin box is just what they're doing. That will be exclusive with Brinkley for the first year, and I'm pretty sure you're going to watch other manufacturers jump on that. Now, on the front here, this thing absolutely looks like a Decepticon. On camera, those look like little purple glow panels. In reality, they absolutely are not. These are intended to be these big white glow panels, um, and uh, they were kind of testing out some different things. They were kind of trying some black uh, panels to see how they looked, and uh, they said, no, no, we're going to go to big white glow panels, so don't worry. Uh, it's not a Decepticon, they're, they're, but there is more than meets the eye to this thing, so kind of keep that in mind. Like we've got the full observation camera suite right here. You flip on your left-hand turn signal, uh, and uh, that little camera is going to clip right on so that, you know, you can see if there's some idiot named Uncle Josh the RV nerd in a Kia Soul riding in your blind spot. Another thing I really like on these, they uh, shunned the traditional Schwintech bed slide system. This is a power gear system. This is the same kind of thing you see on a lot of big motorhomes. And the idea behind this is that it, uh, it, the, there's, there's reliability aspects to it. The other thing is it allows for a much deeper bed slide. And especially on this big wide body beauty, it really opens it up. Also, you may notice as we go around, their windows are a little different. I call them square flow windows. Uh, and on the way down, if you're really eagle eyed, there's something different looking about the bottom of that bed slide. That's because the floors of all the slide outs are all composite. Now, God forbid you have some kind of leak somewhere. It's nice to know that your slide floor is not going to rot out from under you. There's also extra little nice details like you got the little, um, you know, spotlights down here that, you know, when I you remember to turn them on, you can see what you're doing. Um, over here, we have a tankless on-demand water heater. And something a lot of people don't realize is these things are not all created equally. That is a 60,000 BTU tankless heater. The most that you typically see in the towable RV industry is 30 to 40. That means you can be doing nonstop hot showers and using hot water in the kitchen and nobody has to deal with the chilly willy situation. But outside the RV, this is where they start kicking it up a notch like Emerald Lagasse. Like a, a diesel pusher basement, you've got a pair of these more ride slide out storage trays. Just like the inside, a lot of the storage comes to you. Again, the whole idea behind this was where kind of, you know, fashion meets function where it both looks good and functions well and this is one of those things right here you have that powered more ride cord reel but look at this you notice how your power cord it's actually like it's uh, it comes with the rv obviously but it, it hooks up inside of the rv cavity not outside that way the meth heads who are chopping copper can't steal your power cord when it's in storage ain't that nice now, I know that that's not a pretty thing I necessarily said, but anyone who's camped or had their RV in storage, they know that sadly, that is a real thing that sometimes you have to contend with. Over here, uh, up top here, you see these switches. Those are electric gate valves. You don't have to crawl around on the ground to empty your sewer tanks. Now, somebody's gonna be kind of freaked out by that because they say, oh my gosh, what if it fails? Yes, there's a manual override, so you don't got to worry about it. You may have noticed those little lights above them, too. Those are little indicator lights so that you can tell whether it's open or closed because, you know, you really can't visually line of sight see that stuff. Now, you kind of got an idea of the pass-through storage, but this right here was one of the first things that I saw on this RV that made me go, whoa. Fifth-wheel toy haulers really tend to lean on the fact that you have these giant garages for storage, right? Well, they usually have about two things for outside, like front pass-through storage. They have about jack and squat. And you can see that, that is not the case. But what if, you know, you don't want one giant open cavity where cargo can kind of, you know, shift and wiggle all over the place? Well, they thought of that. Because if you notice those handles, well, the, the now one handle hanging from the ceiling of the pass-through, there's this like split door, double drop-down bulkhead wall well, you know, maybe it is a Decepticon. Maybe it does transform before your very eyes right here. But if you want it 50-50, if you want to leave it wide open, you want to close it off, you can. But look at how much space is available in front of that with all the room that you have in here. Um, the, uh, the, the fellow that stress tested this on the road, he said he had four of those full-on big zero gravity chairs up in here, up in here, and uh, even a couple uh, portable tables. So that, uh, you know, basically no matter where he went, he had his full outdoor complement just right up here in the front of this thing. And as you can see right here, they've got what I like to call the Sir Mix-a-Lot storage up front. They've got uh, two layers. Uh, double up. Uh, uh. Now over here, they're using a different kind of generator. 
it's a 5500 inverter generator but you're like flex power who's that okay so this thing right here um what's cool about this is an onan generator is very nice this is like a hundred pounds lighter the other thing is uh this has a pull start and it will like it sits and idles very quietly it doesn't sit there and idle at full tilt like an onan generator does so it's far more neighbor friendly depending on where you're at and uh Loud noise at night, that is a thing a lot of RVers really have contention with. Now, they're using a uh, the new Generation 2 hydraulic pump system for all their slides, so each slide can operate independently. Up on the roof, standard, 800 watts of solar, 60 amp charge controller, 200 total amp hours of lithium batteries, and a 3,000 watt pure sign inverter. That is hands down the single most involved, in-depth, and advanced factory solar and inverter package I've ever seen on a towable RV. Now, maybe somebody else is doing a little bit more. I don't know, that's the most I've ever seen. Um, now, the question might be, okay, so what can that inverter run? I have theories, but they haven't done testing on that yet. So I don't want to overpromise and underdeliver. From the hip, um, you know, microwave, all your outlets, all that stuff should be able to operate. The question is, what about the air conditioner? And that's the kind of testing that they need to do yet because they're not actually yet um, in possession of the uh, air conditioner that they intend to use. So they're not exactly sure what that inverter is gonna run. Now, <laughs> that propane bottle looks pitifully small, right? It's a 30 pound bottle. That's just a giant side saddle space with a matching one on the other side. If you wanna put like 40 pound bottles in here, no sweat, you could do that, no sweat. Um, that's another really cool thing about the generator. It's dual fuel. It is gas and propane. And literally while it's running, there's a little selector switch on the inside. You can change the fuel source on the fly with that thing. It's crazy. Now, this is sadly something I can't really demonstrate on camera because audio stuff doesn't translate well. Best sound system I've ever heard. I'm not lying. Uh, I, was, I was actually telling them, you know, if you guys, you wanna really flex on everybody else in the entire industry, what you need to do is you need to literally have a launch party party and hire a dj and you need to pump his music and his turntable through your rv so that everybody can be blown away by this but it's actually coming uh through your rv by the way anytime as a former musician who's played live on stage anytime i think of a dj this is what comes into my head come see my laptop live but enough about me actually i, I have no problem with djs it's just it's just a different thing it's a joke um anyway uh, okay, remember the, the Moride storage tray we saw on the other side? This is number three. It has three of these big belly basement trays right here so that all the storage, once again, comes to you. This is another really bonkers thing. Remember all the different, you know, command and, and touch and control panels we saw inside? These are all backup redundant, like layer four of peace of mind switches that all do the same thing. You can run your slides and all kinds of stuff right from there, just in case you're, you're worried about the Bluetooth or you have some weird connectivity thing. There's still physical switches you can get out and manipulate. Well, you notice there's a little bit more room left over here. And when I first looked at this, I'm like, oh cool, it's just another like kind of pull out storage box where it comes to you. And then I reached in here and I opened it up and I fell in here. That's an outside refrigerator door, that is dad's hidden medicine cabinet right there. That is exactly where you can keep the uh, the barley pop and the hug juice barrels, um, mostly because hug juice barrels can make a, a really good mixer and they come automatically with a side of diabetes that Wilford Brimley would really appreciate. So <laughs> once again, the, uh, the square flow windows, as I call them, this is a frameless window, but uh, it, it basically, it tilts open to an extreme degree, very similar to a Euro window, kind of like how you saw the shades inside. So these can actually give you great, great airflow. Now the slide side windows, those aren't gonna open for airflow. Those are the ones that are going to right there. And you know, one area that they obviously really cut the corner, this thing is only outfitted with three side awnings. So if what you're looking for is uh, throwing shade at the neighbors, well, you, you can do so quite literally because 
They, uh, they use a shorter awning arm, so it's not gonna be a little bit of a headbanger, which means they can extend that front awning further forward to maximize your patio space. And, uh, you know, second awning off the face of the slide, third awning off the face of the garage, then another power awning over the, uh, the rear patio party deck. But I try to be fair. Um, something that it's, it's not like anything they did wrong. It's just a thing that can't really be avoided. If it is a rainy day and, uh, you're coming in and out that main door, when an awning arm is right next to the door, you get spritzed in the face a little bit. But again, that's just a thing that happens with everybody really, you know, over here, we've got the, uh, the more ride safety rail, uh, handheld system, you know, handrail system rather. What I like about this is it folds straight in and out. It doesn't fold over the door so that an unmonitored crotch goblin at the campsite doesn't lock you in your camper, basically. And the only way to get out of there is dog bounty hunter boot kick it to get yourself out, which breaks your door handle. Uh, although, at least with this toy hauler, you have like, you know, four other exit points. Notice, too, both sides of the RV, they have that little, kind of call it like ground effect lighting. And it just looks cool. You can obviously turn it off so you don't bother the neighbors. But... Where it's cool is over by the sewer station. If you do need to hook up at night, that is something you uh, can do. Now, sometimes it's, it, it really is about talking about things that you can't overtly discern. Like the fact that we have Cooper H rated tires. And you're looking at something with these weight specs and you're going, whoa, two axles, not three. Those are 8K axles right there on Sumo Springs with a Moride CRE 3000 compression, ru <laughs> can't talk, compression rubber equalizing system. Basically, they've got the hardware that is uh, up to the task. Now, pardon me as I slide past the roof support pole, currently doing a heck of a job for us. I, I scared this poor guy right out of the RV. <laughs> Look at this over here. At a glance, you're like, why are there wires hanging down? Well, like, what kind of crap is this? On both sides of the RV, there are these little hideaway retraction kind of things. Over here, basically, it has like a household extension cord built right into it. And in case you're wondering, that's where your speakers are. Your speakers are all hidden underneath of this thing. And uh, on the other side, well, that's a horse of a different color. We're going to talk about that when we get there. Now, people are going to be asking the question all the time, is it Four Seasons? First of all, I greatly, greatly dislike the phrase Four Seasons RVing. And uh, because I think it, it sets some false expectations for what you could encounter. But is it going to be hot, cold camp, tested, rated, proven? Yes, absolutely. And that's actually one of the things I think is very cool about the garage floor. It's a major difference you can't see. They're using a different type of radiant belly wrap, basically. And uh, what it allows them to do is create a hollow cavity under the garage floor that is forced air heated. So it actually does have a forced air heated thermal break between the outside and the inside of the garage floor. Many, even high dollar fifth wheel toy haulers don't have that. Now, you hear a lot of brands uh, use phrases like double insulated garage floor. And it's not that that's necessarily untrue. It's not like this though. This is going yet another step further. So people who do want to use the rear room like, like, a, uh, like an office or a, uh, a bunk room or something like that, well, you've actually got the ability to keep the climate back there far more controlled. And again, power awning off the back of this thing too. This has <laughs> four power awnings on it and you can control them from your phone, from those panels, from whatever you want, you know, basically. Um, now you saw the side view camera, obviously up top, you've got that rear view camera um, right there. But I also wanna zoom in on something that isn't as obvious. Instead of the skirting just being all stapled and screwed in place, they actually rivet all of this stuff in place and then you know mask it basically so that it just looks super super clean but it's it's riveted in place it's it's not even screwed it's like it's a step above and beyond that and what i like back here on this patio is how they basically kind of made this sort of match what you saw inside the garage so there's really there's a there's a nice uh, aesthetic symmetry interior versus exterior and i'm i'm still trying to figure out how i can sneak a couple of them brinkley chairs over here into my little kia soul without anybody noticing but they're not within earshot or anything can't hear me saying that never mind anyway they're looking over here now um <laughs> again you're not going to have to do anything like option on the steps and this right here this is so cool this is one of those moride zero gravity doors but if you don't know what that means i recruited the help of uh, Mr. Nate, the executive that actually uh, was kind of the brainchild and the tester behind this, 
Look at this demo. With one hand, he can put this thing all the way down, put it all the way up. Basically, it's got a, a coil retraction system and it has a 12 volt lock, like the hatchback of an SUV. So, uh, you know, there's, there's not latches and locks on the outside. They're like, somebody could cut a lock and get into your rig. It's far, far more secure. But in case you're curious, kind of like that time my Uncle Gary locked me in the trunk and I had to jump out at 35 mile an hour and hit my head, which explains a lot of things about me. You see that yellow rip cord hanging down there? On the inside, that's a manual uh, unlock for that garage door. So if you lose power and the 12 volt lock isn't working, you can still get in your rig. Speaking of power! I forgot that generator, it has a pull start on it. So you have to really go out of your way to leave yourself stranded on this thing. Now over here in this little uh, skirt space, cause this is kind of hanging down next to the I-beam reel. Oh, that's another thing. They actually wrap and insulate the, uh, the chassis rails on the inside. So um, it is a truly enclosed heated uh, cavity, heated tank heaters, all that kind of stuff. You've got your dual 30 gallon fuel tank inlets here. They don't cross flow. Um, so, uh, you know, that way you can put like high octane fuel in one and, and normal gas for your generator. But if you want just more fuel for your generator, you can always fill them both with the same and then just pump it over with the pump on board. And you also have over here your onboard uh, air compressor, which I, I think is cool. Just make sure you kind of drain that every day to get the moisture out of it. Otherwise it can sort of rot from the inside out. But look at this, I really like they almost like hide how many windows are in this. They'll put that masking on the windows where the white would match the side. Like they'll make the windows look like they're not even there. Black on black, white on white, whatever the case may be. But you can see through that stuff. You can see, uh, you know, from the outside to the inside. And then over here, you've got one of these uh, telescopic ladders. What's great about these, they are actually rated to hold more weight than those traditional ladders that are built right on the side of the RV. Now, part of the footprints here, but again, I wanted to get you up top because there are some very serious different things they're doing here that once again, don't just appear to the naked eye. First of all, we are looking at again at that optional third air conditioner. Uh, air conditioners one and two up front standard. The garage air is one of the very few options available on this. Well, you may have also noticed these huge solar panels, 400 watts of factory standard solar, 3000 watts of uh, you know inversion, 200 amp hours of lithium batteries again right from the factory level and that's cool but we talked about that the other reason i'm up here is uh to kind of talk about something very different that they're doing and it sounds like snake oil and <laughs> with my experience in the rv industry i'm kind of having a little bit of a hard time wrapping my head around this but basically they're using a totally different seal system now it looks like the exact same self-leveling sealants that everybody else uses but this is the kind of stuff that you find like on the roofs of diesel pushers, things that run far, far more money. And here's the thing, the sealants that they're using up here have a lifetime warranty. Essentially, this is as close as you're ever going to find currently in the towable RV industry to a zero maintenance roof out there. Now, like I said, that sounds super like what? Like that sounds like snake oil. I really, I feel like time will be the, the testing factor, but the thing is, this already is time-tested stuff. Like when you see a full body paint pusher uh, or full body painted diesel pusher, that's the kind of seals that they're using around all the roof fixtures. And yet you see diesel pushers left abandoned sometimes for years and they don't have leak issues because they're just using better stuff where it matters most. Which naturally begs the question, why isn't everybody doing it this way? Cost. This is not going to be the least expensive product out there. Again, at this time, I don't have a hard dollar figure for it, but um, this is something that they're doing. It costs a little bit more up front, but this is, I think, a textbook example of how an ounce of prevention may well be worth a pound of cure. And it's like, as I'm going around this thing, all of the talking I've done, there's still more things that like I haven't had a chance to talk about. Like, did you notice when the specs flashed up on the screen, the holding tank capacities on this thing? And here's what's crazy. It's like, those are true capacities. We're like, they have multiple gray tanks. That is all plumbed together so that it, it cross flows basically. So you actually have like the biggest holding tank capacities, truly, I think of anybody else out there right now. That's, that's pretty awesome. All right, everybody, you heard enough from me. 
Once again, it's your time to chime in right here. Jump in the comment section, let me know what you like. Um, is this the future of toy haulers or is it just some crazy pipe dream? You be the judge, we'll get that feedback back to them and we'll see how they can tweak it around to make it even better the next time around. Uh, once again, remember, this is uh, prototype number one, early proof of functional concept changes will occur before this thing goes out. And at the time of this filming, once again, I don't know what the price tag is going to be. And I know that a million of our are, are going to ask in the comment section. We will fill in those blanks as soon as we have the opportunity. But in the meantime, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Mm -hmm.